Good Tuesday morning. I'm Father Steve from St. Bridget's Hermitage, and this is Moments with the Master. Today is the 19th day of December 2023, and today our readings come from the book of Judges, chapter 13, verses 2 through 15, Psalm 71, verses 3 through 17, the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 25. Well, where's the time gone, folks? We're already in week three of Advent. The year is almost over. And the holidays are crushing in upon us. I know that you're all busy with your Christmas preparations, your parties, your luncheons, your dinners, all those great things, all the fellowship you get to enjoy. But I hope that you've taken a little time to reflect, to pray, and to prepare about our Savior's birth. You know, as Christians, especially Catholics, you know, we have the opportunity, thank God, because of the internet, that we have podcasts, uh, social media. We have all kinds of ministers out there, priests, deacons, proclaiming the Christmas message. All kinds of reflections on what it means and I hope that you you know you've taken a little time to you know catch one or two you know as the week goes on as the month goes on I want you guys not to lose sight because it's easy to get derailed and not pray not keep up on your scripture readings folks slow down take some time you know Christ is the reason for the season. Okay, so enough of that. Enough of my prod. On to my reflection. It's going to be a short and easy one, folks. Uh, and I think, I'm hoping that you'll see why when I, when I finish it. I was thinking about the first time many of us have heard the Christmas message proclaimed. I remember, you know, pretty well. I was in my grandparents den at the time and it was yeah it wasn't in church it was on tv it was proclaimed not by a priest or a deacon or a minister but by a little boy holding a blanket i think you know where i'm going with that a charlie brown christmas and linus was reading that beautiful gospel and Stopping to think about it, it was unique for its time. It's still unique today. Not only the way it was it was delivered in a, in a cartoon, but St. Luke's Gospel, the telling of, of the narrative, of the nativity, of the shepherds, of the babe. It's endearing. It, year after year, century after century, I don't care where you hear it, whether it's on TV or in church. It's a story that draws us to our Savior. And since a lot of you are too busy, sadly, I'm going to go ahead and cover that Christmas message. St. Luke's Gospel reads, In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Carinus was governor in Syria, and all went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant of the house and family of David. He was to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and whom he was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, 
who is the Messiah of the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and had gone to heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about the child. And all who heard, who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. And as it had been told to them, the Christmas message, that's what this whole month should be about. Our Christmas season, especially in the West, has turned out to be a mix of pre-Christian, Christian, and secular traditions. They're a beautiful thing when they're all jumbled together, as long as we don't lose sight of whose birth it is and the reason why we're celebrating the 25th of December. You know, it's interesting that we just look at the word Christmas and we see that it literally means Christian Mass or shortened form of Christ Mass. There's, there's great power in Christmas. And then every year, the beautiful passage from Luke tells us about the love God has for us. God came down to us that we might have a closer relationship to them. It's about God's overpowering love, the, the message that he wants to be part of your life. He wants to be friends. He wants to be your, your guide. He wants to be your God. And he, give, he brings with, with that the reassurance, reassurance we need, especially at the end of this year, we got wars, rumors of wars. We got all kinds of social issues. We got hate. We have division. And God wants us to know that He's with us. He's for us. And we can do everything through Him that strengthens us. Christmas is that time that we should reflect, spiritual reflection, and not in the way that, you know, we, first of the month, we're going to find everybody rushing to find a, a new resolution that they're going to drop off by, by February. Christmas should be a time of spiritual reflection, dedication, rededication to our Lord, to build ourselves back up on, on our foundations of our faith. It's a celebration, and we, we should enjoy it. We should never lose sight of the reason that we're having the celebration to begin with, the child. The child who years later would be hung on a cross and die for our sins. Folks, don't lose sight of the reason for the season. Don't get too busy to remember our Savior. Well, folks, I told you they'd be giving short reflections. I know everyone's busy. They're not, not trying to take a bunch of your time today. Just a gentle reminder. Folks, I wish you all the blessed Christmas tidings I can. I wish you love and happiness. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Till we meet again.